And you know what? You'll be able to find Oregon Petroli Soul more and more often. Just ask for it. And if you don't see it, maybe you're in the wrong store. Now, one place you can be sure to find it is at McCormick & Schmick's Seafood Restaurants in downtown Portland. One of their core menu items is Petroli Sole Parmesan. And right here with me to help prepare their famous Petroli Sole recipe is Senior Executive Chef Bill Keem. Hey, Bill, how are you? Gary, I'm great. Thank you so much Thanks for Thanks for coming me. and sharing this great recipe with us. Real pleasure. It's Oregon Petroli Sole. How can you go wrong? Please. What well, are we going to do? It's really one of my favorite fish. It's just so wonderfully sweet. It works in such a variety of ways, and it's really perfectly suited for, for this recipe. It's got a nice, firm texture, a beautiful, thick profile, which really sets Petrali Sol apart. Absolutely fabulous fish. Hear a lot of comments, not only about the flavor, but that incredible texture. And I think that's really what makes Petrali the king of souls. Please. Absolutely love it. Well, let's talk about what we're going to do here. We're going to do a, what's a, a classic three-stage breading technique. It's done with all sorts of different uh, food products, but absolutely perfect with a flat fish like Petrali Sol. We start with a little seasoned flour, which means we've just taken all-purpose flour, a little salt and pepper, nothing more okay. is really necessary. That's our first step. Stage two is egg that's been uh, beaten with a little cream, a little milk, a little half and half. You could even use water. The idea is to create a, uh, a bond between the flour and the egg. And then the final stage, which in this case is the Petrali's crusty Parmesan coating. We take Parmesan, and it's got to be the uh, the shredded type because that not the grated. That, that grated dusty, uh, it's a little bit uh, too fine okay. for this dish. Okay. But that that uh, shredded parm, and then we add panko breadcrumbs, which is the flaky Japanese breadcrumb that's got that just terrific crispy little yeah that, yeah that yeah. texture that and, and adds so much to this final stage. And our viewers can get panko breading at any seafood counter in any major retailer, right? Absolutely, it's okay. out it's out in the market uh, pretty much anywhere you go. So, let's okay. let, let's do this. We've okay. got we start with the flour first in the flour. Okay. First in the flour, a nice uh, uh, coating but light. So we shake off the excess into the uh, milk and egg. Let that drain a bit, perfect, and then right into the cheese and panko mixture. And we want to kind of pat it in there and 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 let, lay a bit on top. That's perfect. You don't want to get your hands too dirty, so you make sure that that coating is kind of between you and the fish. Absolutely. Absolutely. Perfect. Absolutely. Absolutely perfect. Oh, man. That's Bill, you were telling me uh, a, a, a real tip about it's best if, if possible. Now, you, you said you can go ahead and do it this way, but if you have the opportunity to let it sit in the refrigerator it for a half hour, 45 minutes? Yeah, if you can give it a little bit of a resting time, that allows that, that breading to really adhere to the egg mixture and gives you a nice uh, firm coating that works better once it's in the pan. Okay, now I'm just about done here. When we get this last filet breaded, let's move over to the stove and you can show me your technique with that saute pan. Okay, now we've just turned this and I, I, wish, I wish you could get your nose right in here with Bill and I. I'm telling you, this is not only gorgeous, the aroma is incredible. Now, Bill, you're going to do some magic with the sauce? We're going to make a real quick butter sauce here, but I just want to make sure that everyone sees just how nicely golden brown that is. I mean, this fish just couldn't be more perfect for and this. And quickly, fish. too. And this, uh, this was a four or five minute process. Okay, so we're talking three minutes on the first side, two Minute. minutes on the second, thereabouts. Onto the plate. Okay. All right, so let's do the butter sauce now. We're just going to take a little bit of whole butter. I've got a couple of tablespoons here. And the idea is that we're going to produce what's called Bernoise Noisette. And Bernoisette is a brown butter sauce that's French. And the key to it is to get the butter nicely brown without burning it. Yes, please. So, as you can see in the pan, it's already starting to brown as soon as it gets into the fairly hot pan. And as soon as that butter melts a little bit more and we hold that beautiful brown color. That, that brown butter has this nut-like uh, aroma to it and flavor that is a perfect complement to the fish. It's like paint by numbers. So when it gets to that brown shade, we're there, ready to move on. There it is. And then we're going to splash just a little bit of fresh lemon juice in it. Just maybe a tablespoon. We're going to put a few capers in it, which are absolutely wonderful and add a little piquant contrast to the richness of the cheese. And then finish it with a couple of very small fresh lemon segments. We'll swirl that around, and that is ready to go to the plate. Well, let's get over here and plate it let's up. Let's do it. How's it coming, Bill? We are ready, Gary. Oh, gosh, that smells good. So you see, this is just a beautiful medium brown. 
you got the capers, you've got fresh lemon, you've got that nutty aroma coming off of here. And it's a great complement to the richness of the cheese on the fish. A little chopped parsley? Scatter away. Oh my goodness gracious.